Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am Tiffany and this is my knitting channel where I, well it's not just a knitting channel, this is my channel where I talk about knitting and crochet and sewing and a little bit of cross stitch or needlepoint. Uh, if you are new to my channel, welcome. Hi, hello, it's nice to meet you. And if you are a return viewer, thank you for coming back. And we have so, so much to talk about in today's video. We have a stack of FOs. We have um, an old project revised and tons of new projects that I want to cast on and a yarn shortage and yeah, <laughs> we have a lot. Okay, so I thought first of all, I would show you guys the very first shawl that I ever knit. And um, I wanted to show you in my first video, but it was in the attic and uh, funny thing, it wasn't in the attic, it was in a box under my bed that I had left the video recording, went and looked and literally rummaged right past the shawl. It, it was there the whole time because as soon as I was done recording, I went back into my bedroom and went to put the stuff away and it was right there. I was like, really? Wow. Okay, that's fine. So the very first shawl that I ever knit was called Piper's Journey and it is a pattern by Paula Emmons Fusel. And it's a, it was a pattern that was done in collaboration with Kings & Co and i made this back in august of 2015 is when i started it and it says i finished it september 3rd of 2016 so almost a year but it was my first one so we're gonna use that as the reason <laughs> but i used cascade 220 for mine and i believe it was a size 8 needle this was back when i didn't leave myself notes in Ravelry. I, I didn't even know that that was a thing, probably. But yeah, this is it. It's actually not as bright as it's showing up in the pattern. I mean, in the camera, it's actually lighter than this. Um, but it's showing up really bright here. And let's see, I had enough yarn left over to do tassels for it. So I did. And this was my very first pattern, not only in making a shawl, but also in using an applied lace bind off. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, after this one, I was like, oh, I'm going to knit all of the shawls with an applied lace bind off. And honestly, I think I've only ever knit one other one. Um, it's a green and white one with, I believe, a Pico bind off. Um, yeah, it was. I, I've only ever made one other project with an applied lace bind off and which is kind of funny to me. Um, I think it's a fingering weight shawl with an applied lace bind off and I don't even think it's in my Ravelry now that I think about it. But yeah, I wanted to show you guys the very first shawl I ever knit. It's super warm. It's super squishy. The Cascade 220, it, you know, washes just fine and I actually wear mine. Um, I know some people, like my mother, she knits, or she used to knit these amazingly huge, beautiful shawls, but then she doesn't wear them. They just sit in Ziplocs in her drawer, but I, I actually wear mine. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that. So now I can say that I have shown you guys my Piper's journey. And it was so funny because as I was getting ready for filming, I'm like, hmm, I think I actually could make another one of those. I think maybe in like pastels or neutrals would be really nice, like a cream and sand maybe. That would be nice. But anyway, I, I have enough project ideas. I don't need any more. Here are my socks for my accountability problem. <laughs> All right, I finished first off my, um, my muted primary color socks. These ones I used the Wisdom Yarns Socky Bamboo. Oop, pardon the glare. And this is Made in Turkey. 
and it is a 50% merino superwash, 25% nylon, 25% bamboo. And it was really nice to knit with. I used bamboo needles for this one, my nine inch circular bamboo needles. And um, I, I really liked it. These were a quick knit, just a regular vanilla sock with a German short row heel, um, two by two ribbing for the cuff and no contrasting colors and just a regular wedge toe for, for the toe. And yeah, I'm really happy with them. They were, they were fun. They flew off the needles once I got them going, but yeah, pair number one, officially out of the basket. <laughs> All right, and let's see. Pair number two was these ones. I can't remember what the yarn was for these ones. Um, if I still have the label, because I think I already put it in recycling, but if I still have the label, I'll put it right here. Um, but yeah, these ones are the ones that I made for my daughter because she has a slightly bigger foot. I still cast on 64 stitches. I cast on 64 for the other ones as well. Um, two by two ribbing with the two by two on the top of the foot, a regular wedge toe, uh, regular heel flapping gusset, um, not textured or anything, just heel flap and gusset. And yeah, I'm really pleased with them. They were, again, they were, they were fun to make and yeah, pair number two, done. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Pair number three was my Franken socks. And these were, these were not knit on nine inch circulars because you know how when you knit on um, with the long cable um, magic loop, how sometimes you'll end up with like that line. These ones have that line that even though they've been blocked, it's still kind of there. It's not like really visible, but I know it's there. So yeah, but, and here's, here's one of them wrong side out. The ends are woven in it's officially done. So yeah, these I'm really happy with them. And now that the ends are woven in, it really wasn't that bad. So now I'm kind of thinking that I might, you know, have to look into the basket. And oh my gosh, since I finished the socks, I have more balls of yarn. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can do something on the channel where I can like <laughs> give away <laughs> the balls for the the heels and toes and cuffs to maybe like Patreon members or something. I, I don't know because I have, I have so many. <laughs> no, I don't know. Let me know in the comments guys, if you, if you would want to do something like that, like create a membership group or something and we can share like our leftovers, not like, not for money or anything like that, but just simply to share our leftovers. I, I don't know. Let me know if that's something you'd like to do. Maybe we can figure something out on Ravelry or Instagram or something. Anyway. Um, okay. So the mom socks, we have one mom sock and I went online and I Googled, actually I used the Google lens on my cell phone and wanted to know what the name of this yarn was because I really like it. And I think I want to actually knit up another pair. And so I took a picture of it with the Google lens and it came up. It's um, made by, I'll put a little pop-up right here. It's called Wacky Sacky. And this one was called Happy, Happy Flowers, I think. Hap, hap, happy Hippie Stripes or Hippie Stripes or something like that. Happy Hippie Stripes or, or something. It, it's right here. So, and it's not a, a yarn that is like around anymore. So if I wanted to make these again, I'd have to find somebody that was willing to de-stash them. But anyway, so we have one. The other one, I have done the cuff. I have done the leg. I have done the, he the, the ribbing of the heel. I've turned to the heel. I'm pretty sure I've done the gusset and I'm just working on the foot but I decided I didn't want to work on them out of the blue. And so I started working on Mom's Hermione Everyday Socks and I got as far as, 
I finished the Eye of Partridge heel because the very first time I ever made those socks, I didn't do the Eye of Partridge heel. Um, I wasn't comfortable enough yet doing that and that was probably three or four years ago. But um, I decided to give it a try this time and oh my gosh, it's so pretty. But I'm not enjoying knitting that pattern on the foot. So those socks are in timeout right now. So yeah, that's why I want that, those ones aren't done. <laughs> They're in timeout. So what I decided to do instead was to brave learning how to do the heel on my toe up socks. So here is one of the two that are started. Um, I don't have a pair finished of either one of them and I think I may only have a pair of one. And here it is, isn't it? bright. Um, the green isn't quite as bright as it's showing up on the camera, but the sun is really bright in this room. So we're getting, getting pretty bright. And I really like these, but um, remember when I told you guys that I had originally cast on 64 stitches and then decided that I really liked these socks and so I was going to keep them. I wasn't going to give them to mom and I would be good because mom doesn't watch the channel so she'll never know. Then mom watched the channel and mom knew. And it's okay because she talked me into another pair of socks instead. <laughs> so she said I could keep these socks but now that the sock is done I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Um, First off, when it came off the needles, remember I used the 2.75 millimeter and I used the magic loop method. And I know that there's a difference between our tension when we knit with magic loop versus when we knit like on nine inch circulars. And so I think that might've had something to do with my problem, but the sock came out really big. Like instead of it going on this sock blocker, it had to go on a men's sock blocker, the one that I used for Jay. And so I was like, oh, well, I'll just give them to Jay. And he was like, mm, I mean, I'll, I'll take them. But the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, he might take them, but he won't wear them. So I took them off the sock blockers. I put them in the dryer for 10 minutes. Uh, they were still damp. And then I put them on this sock blocker and just went to bed and hoped for the best. And it's okay, like the fit is better. It's still a little bit too loose, but like I said, I think it's a combination of me learning to do toe up. So maybe my tension was a little bit different uh, using a slightly larger needle and doing magic loops. So I think all of those things attributed to my sock being looser and bigger than anticipated. And so that's the first problem. The second problem is I use the German short row heel, which is what I, I prefer. And normally it comes out really nice on my socks, but this time it just, it didn't. It's not, you see that? It's not pretty. It's not even. This is the other side. You know, one side is better than the other. Um, and I don't know why it happened, but I'm not inclined to take it out to find out. <laughs> so that was the second reason, second thing. And the third thing is that when I started the ribbing, I was in a meeting at work and we didn't have to be on camera. So I just picked up the green, I knit one row in the green, and then for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I decided to do one by one ribbing on the cuff of a sock and it should have been two by two. So all that to say, this ribbing is probably gonna come out and be redone because my one by one ribbing is not pretty. Not, not even a little bit. I mean, it is if you fold it in half, you know, cause the other side is always pretty. I don't know why it is that way with ribbing, but there you have it. So I'm probably gonna take the cuff out and redo it. But um, between the sock being too loose, the heel doesn't fit right on my foot like it does on the German short row heel for the cuff down socks. I don't know why, I don't know what's different, but I'm gonna make the other one of these socks because, well, they're really freaking cool. <laughs> um, but I don't think um, I'm going to make the other one, you know, the one that I have that's in like the pale unicorny color. They're sitting right in front of me. 
on the other side of the camera. Um, I don't know that I'm going to to finish those now. I think I might I might frog them. It's going to depend on how that other sock comes out. We'll see from there, I guess. Um, finished object wise, that's all of the socks. So now I think I just have the blue and yellow ones left to do, but that's like a family pack. So it's going to take me like forever to do those. Mom's Hermione everyday socks, the unicorn socks, and then the ones that have the sparkly blue cuff. So I think I still have four pairs of socks to complete from our original video of eight. So I finished four and I have four left. That's not bad for two weeks. Considering I also, da, 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 I did the sleeve <laughs> for my wind sweater. Yay! So yeah, I sat down and I did the sleeve for the wind sweater and I just, I bit the bullet and hoped for the best because remember I didn't leave any notes for myself to tell me whether or not I really used that size nine needle. So what I did was I used size seven needles and I did the twisted rib because that's what I used on the bottom of the, the hem of the actual sweater and it came out really nice and I'm like, okay, so I definitely used a seven. It matches the sweater. Perfect. Let's go. So then I figured, well, if I use the seven, I must have used an eight to make the, the body of the sweater. So that's what I used and I knit probably about this far and then held it up to the sweater to see whether or not um, it matched, you know, the stitches looked about the same, figuring that I had started that sweater so long ago. So chances are that the gauge was gonna be different but because you know, our gauge changes over time. So I figured that I would just use the size eight needles and go from there. So we have a sleeve, which is awesome. I'm super excited. So I just need to pin it to the shoulder and then do the mattress stitch down and then mattress stitch down the, the rest of the sleeve. I did contemplate it, uh, contemplate just knitting it in the round, but then when I got to thinking about it, the sweater has seams on the side and I thought that it would look kind of funny for the body to have seams, but for the arms not to. If for some reason I was feeling inclined to do that much flat knitting, again, I would probably knit the sweater all in one piece, um, or the cardigan, I should say, all in one piece and then I would just knit the sleeves in the round. But yeah, I left myself a long enough tail so I can do the seaming and get that on the sweater. But I did a post on the channel and I said, we have a sleeve. Guess what else we have? We have a yarn problem. This is all the yarn that I have left and we have a whole other sleeve to go. It took me almost the whole skein to make the sleeve. So now I have to go on to Amazon and order another skein of the pumpkin so I can make the other sleeve. And then I will have two balls of this much left. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe I'll put it into stripes and a hat or something. But yeah, so we have one sleeve, we have one to go, but I have to order some more yarn. So maybe by the next video, that will be done. We will see um, how that goes and whether or not the wind sweater is done by the next video. <laughs> um, I think as far as FOs, that's all I have. I thought that I would bring back um, a project. Remember I told you guys I have the ottoman over here off to the side that's full of projects that aside from the Halloween socks are things that I need to just either decide if I'm going to do them or not, or um, do them and then finish them or not do them and frog them. So I went into the ottoman and I decided that I was actually going to finish a project. And the project that I have is called the Novelli sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And here it is, all right. And I'll also do a pop-up right here in case I decide that the glare is too bad for my tablet. 
But yeah, so I had started the Novelli, it says on July 13th, 2019. So I'm thinking I must have started, that must be why I didn't finish the shawl for a year because the same time I was working, I cast this on, I think I also cast on the Novelli. No, because that was 2015. So four years to the day I cast on the Novelli. Okay, so here is my Novelli, and I made the size number four. Um, it's a really beginner-friendly color work pattern, and that's what I needed because it, it truly was my first color work garment. And this is what it looks like. And I can't get it not to fold down because it needs to be blocked. But isn't that beautiful? So I decided I wanted to wear this in the fall. So I have, it's knit from the bottom up and check out those floats guys. Not for, bad for a, a person's first bit. I mean, it's not picture perfect because I've since then knit like color work for other things. And so without it being blocked, like I can notice that there's gonna be some bits that are that might be a little off, but for it being my first piece, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed. Um, so it's knit in the round, bottom up, and then you divide for the sleeves and then you work the front and back separately. And so my back is done. And you're just supposed to let it hold on needles. And then you're supposed to work the front. My needle stuck and so that's what I I'm doing now and I actually put one row in on it today I don't have that much left I just have to knit where am I that's the back I just have to knit six inches and I'm almost done with the six inches I think I'm on row 5 10 15 20 25 28 or 29 and I need 40 well my notes say I need 40 or 44 rows so I sense some counting in my future. After that, I just have to do the ribbing, like what's on the back right here. And then you just join, I do believe, for the shoulders. And then you just have the rest of your arms to work on. Um, so I decided that I'm going to, to finish the Novelli. So hopefully by the next, the next video, <laughs> this will be finished. We'll see. Um, I used, I looked it up, I used Cascade Heritage sock yarn to make this since it was my first color work project. I'm not surprised that I used a more affordable yarn for it. And I know that this color is wine. I know that the brown color was called chocolate. And I know that the white is called snow because I use that a lot for a lot of my my projects um, so yeah so I can go back and add that to my notes because I actually remember what they were called but and now that I'm thinking about it the project I'm like hmm I think I actually might want to make another one of these do you guys ever get like that you make a project and then you get 75 80 percent of the way done and you're like oh I want to make another one I do that now though when I do it I tend to cast on or start the other one like in the beginning of the summer I decided I wanted to make crochet shorts and so I made a pair for my daughter she loved them I made them out of um, Bergère de France Ideal no si Volet. yeah Bergère de France si Volet in this pretty powder blue and she loves them and then I decided that I wanted a pair and so I made myself a taupe pair out of acrylic yarn and a pinky peachy pair out of like a cotton. And I started both pairs at the exact same time. They're in the ottoman. <laughs> so let me know, do you guys do that? Do you get working on a project and you're like, oh, I enjoy this so much that I'm gonna cast on, you know, another one, whether it's washcloths or socks or shawls or sweaters, hats. I did that with, um, petite knits hat that she came out with oh 
gosh, what's it called? The Oslo hat. I knit one for my husband for his birthday. Then I knit one for myself. Uh, and I cast on two other ones all at the same time because I just thought it was the greatest usage of a skein of yarn and a skein of mohair. Um, because during the pandemic, I went through a bit of a, a mohair craze where I bought mohair, all, always hand dyed, beautiful mohair. And I have a sweater that you guys will see when I do my sweater parade when the weather cools down. Um, and I love it, but it's got mohair in it, and so I can't wear it because it's so itchy. <laughs> but on the hat, it's not so bad because the ha your hair covers it. So, yeah, so I ended up with like four Oslo hats all cast on at the same time, and I finished Jay's, and then I finished mine, and I just recently frogged the other two. Did I frog them both? No, I think I only frogged one. I, the other one I left on the needles as a possible, but yeah. Do you guys do that? Do you cast on more than one of something when you find that you're really enjoying it? Or please don't tell me I'm the only one. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, all that to say is one of my projects from the Ottoman that I have pulled back out and that we are going to hopefully have finished by the next video. Um, okay, let's talk about things that I want to cast on. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I have one, two, three, four that I want to cast on. Um, let's do these ones first. Okay, so these ones are called the Simply Ribbed Socks. There's my pattern, and I will put a little pop-up right here. And this was a pattern that I believe I got off of Etsy. Yeah, and... Uh, the Etsy shop, I believe, is called This Handmade Life, and I thought that these were really cool uh, because the heel is also ribbed and it just goes right into the sock. And I thought that I would use a yarn from Mom that she actually had the label in. Check it out. I can tell you what it's called. Uh, so this is called... It's from the Queensland collection. It's called Rustic Tweed. It's a fine wool and alpaca tweed. I thought that these would be so warm and toasty. So here's the label. And this is the yarn. It's not quite as blue as it's showing up on the camera, but look at those flecks. Like, how pretty is that? I'm super excited to make these. Like, can you just see, see those together? Yeah, so that's project number one that I want to, want to cast on, but I think that I might wait till closer to the end of August to cast these on. They'll kind of maybe be my nod to fall, maybe, because there's another one down here. Um, Okay, so I was watching the Ollie and Bella podcast, and she, Cherie Aunt just finished making these, the bookshelf sock. And as soon as I saw them, I was like, oh, I like those. I really, really, really like those. I have to get them. So I went and I got the pattern. Um, the pattern is by Becky Monday. Uh, and I will put put it right here for you guys and it's a textured sock inspired by my love of bookshelves so I thought that that would be really fun to make and then I picked to go with it this yarn called Miss Crosby loves to play and the colorway is called Tiger Lily um, it is on their train case base which is 55 percent superwash merino, 15 percent nylon, and 30 percent outlast viscose. I have no idea what that means. Uh, it says machine wash cold with white colors, machine dry until just damp, and then lay flat to dry. So here's what the label looks like. And the colorway 
this guy said it's called Tiger Lily. And my ball is falling apart because I pulled the label out. <gasps> this is the color. How pretty is that? Like, can you picture those together? Ooh. It's actually a really close match, I think. So yeah, so that's another one that I want to cast on. And then we have two more that I want to cast on. Um, if you guys click on the community tab for the channel, you'll see that I did a poll asking um, which colors I should use. And I decided that I'm going to go with the summer one for this pattern. Um, unless you guys vote in the next couple of days and change my mind. Um, but these are called the Summer Vibes Sock. And I just happened to be scrolling in Ravelry and I saw them. So I thought they were super cute. And I figured that they would be the last pair of socks that I knit for the summer, kind of my nod to the summer sort of thing. Um, these ones are also by Olivia. So these ones are also um, from, yeah this handmade yeah I think these are also a this handmade life pattern Olivia Olivia maybe olive Olivia I don't know those ones say Olivia these say olive so who knows possibly either way it'll be right here where I got the pattern from I decided that I was going to do them as um, my last nod to summer and so I'm going to use the snow for the main color and then I'm going to use these as the contrasting because it's got five stripes in the sock so I thought that I would use these one two three four five and this way I can get rid of some of my minis <laughs> but I thought that 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 would be that that would be fun to do so these I will probably cast on this weekend. And since they're just shorties, it should be quick. Uh, let's see, I have one more that I want to cast on that, um, yeah. You guys can tell me which ones, what you think. So there are these socks that are called the Sunburst socks. And I can't remember who I was watching it was somebody on YouTube, <laughs> one of the knitting podcasts. Anyway, she made these and I fell in love. I pictured all these different ways that these could be made. Like these would be cool for Halloween if you made them in black with the red cuff and the red bit running down. Or um, I was telling my mom that they would be cute if we made them in like red and white, then it would be like a strawberry cake that was frosted. Um, yeah, all kinds of different ways, but I wanted to make them kind of fall. And so I found this in my stash. I don't know what it is. It must be a mom yarn, but it's, I thought this would be pretty for like the cuffs, you know, and that bit that's running down and the toes, right? And I am torn between two yarns that I actually do know what they are. They are both Malabrigo sock, um, both Malabrigo ultimate sock actually. And this one is color 139 in, I don't know, potion, 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 I don't know. So this is the first one. And this would actually be the body of the sock. And in the pattern, the sock is made in reverse stockinette, so I thought that this would be fun. And this is the Malabrigo sock ultimate, like I said. It's fingering weight, approximately 420 yards, 75% um, merino, superwash, and 25% nylon. So I thought these two together first, this for the cuff and the bit that runs down, and this for the main body. 
But then I also came across this one, which is Malabrigo Ultimate Sock, and it's number 862, and it's called, I don't know, Petrus, Pytrus? I don't know, what do you guys think it's called? <laughs> Uh, there we go. So that's that one. And this is what it looks like. Now I think this one might stripe more than the other one would. So maybe not this one now that I think about it and I see it on the camera and I see that it looks like it would stripe much differently than this one. But I thought that these two looked really nice together. So what do you guys think? Do you think the Pedras or the Potion or Potion or however you say it? Say, and yeah, it's a reverse stock in it sock. Let me know what you guys think. Which one should I choose? Because I thought that these would be my nod to the fall shorty socks. So I will do a nod to the end of summer shorty sock and then a nod to the fall shorty sock. And huh, I think I've done everything. Um, no, I have two things, three things left. Um, first thing is squishy mail. I did have some squishy mail. And if you notice the title of this video um, was a partridge in an orange tree and it was a nod to my mom's eye of partridge socks because or the eye of partridge heel on my mom's socks because i really enjoyed it and then the other thing that i got was not something i would normally buy but i bought it a couple of days after i recorded our first video because i was like ah, i live in florida so why not so there is a yarn dyer here in florida i found on etsy and their shop is called Cashmere and Coconuts. And this is what their label looks like. And here's all their skinnies. If you guys wanna scan their QR code and check them out. And I'll also leave a little link up here. Uh, not a link, but a little bubble to show you what their shop looks like on Etsy in the description down below. And the reason that I got the yarn was because they had one that's called <laughs> Florida Oranges. And I thought that was so appropriate. And this is what it looks like. It's a sock set, obviously. But I thought that that would be so cool um, to do like some sort of a textured sock pattern for. Um, it's not something that I would normally wear, which I know sounds funny to say, considering, you know, I make these, <laughs> but I don't know. I think that's just, I have neon orange and I contemplated putting neon orange for the cuff in these because it's actually in these, but in the end I decided it was too much. So it's kind of ironic that I have this, but yeah, so this was my incoming goodies was this particular skein and this is called their basic sock set it's a 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon uh it's 437 yards and yeah it's soft it's got a slightly tight spin on it so i'm hoping that that means that it's going to bloom when i knit with it um yeah it's soft, it's really soft. So I'm super excited to, to give this a try and see. I was on their shop and they actually had quite a few other ones that I really liked, but I figured I would start out with something Florida based and go from there and see. Anybody else love that new yarn smell? Yeah, it's just so sheepy. <laughs> All right, so that was my incoming mail and um, let me see. What else did I want to tell you guys? Oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to tell you guys. Okay, so go over to the community tab and there's a question for you guys. I decided that I wanted to do a giveaway at 100, 300, and 500 subscribers and I'm already halfway there. 
I think I'm like at 43 or 44 subscribers as of recording of this video. So I'm almost there to the first hundred. And I wanted to ask you guys, um, which would you rather have? Would you rather have a skein of yarn or would you rather have a pattern of your choice from Ravelry or Etsy? Um, yeah, let me know. Go hop over to the community tab and vote. So I am hoping that by next video, I will have 100 subscribers. So if I do in that video, I will tell you guys how to enter. I think I'll just have you guys do like the like, subscribe and comment thing. And since you guys will have already subscribed, you just have to like and comment. <laughs> and then I'll just randomly pick one, maybe two people. Um, but let me know in the, the community tab in the vote, which would you guys rather prefer? And then I think when I get to like a thousand subscribers, like, I don't know, maybe I'll do a sock set bundle or I don't know. I want to do something to celebrate, but I figured one, three and five hundred subscribers for each of those 100 subscribers, 300 subscribers and 500 subscribers. I'll do a giveaway for each one. So let me know in the community tab um, what you guys would rather have. Would you rather have a skein of yarn or would you rather have a pattern? And yeah, we'll go from there. I wanted to share with you guys the most recent book that I just finished in Audible. So I read a lot. I'm always reading some book and in paper form because that's my preference. But when I go for a walk or if I'm driving in the car, sometimes I'll listen to an Audible. I just finished listening to The Other Einstein in Audible and it was really interesting. I like um, historical fiction novels, ones where I actually can learn something as well. And I didn't know that um, Elsie was not or that Elsa was not Albert Einstein's first wife. He had a first wife. And she was also a physicist and a mathematician. And I didn't know that. Um, so there is some stuff in the book which could be taken either one way or the other um, in terms of how much liberty the author took. But then there's lots of information that she took from their old love letters that are stored at Princeton University. Um, and things like that. And I really, really enjoyed that. So I figured part of the podcast, I would also share with you guys what I'm currently listening to or what I'm currently reading. Um, and yeah, that's what I finished last night was The Other Einstein. I highly recommend it. It's a really good book. And I'll leave a little picture right here of what the cover looks like. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, let's see, we're almost at 45 minutes. So I think I have covered everything that I wanted to talk about. I have already started picking out my yarns for my winter projects and my Christmas projects, two pairs of socks. Um, there's a sweater that I have wanted to make for years that I've had the sweater quantity yarn for for years and I'm finally going to cast it on. Um, yeah, so lots of winter goodies coming. I'm super excited. Um, I still haven't officially picked my advent yet, but I know that I really need to. I have two in my Etsy shopping cart. I had three, but one of them is already sold out and there's two left. Um, I will put a picture of the two that I'm torn between. I think it's just a case of sticker shock and I just have to get over it. <laughs> um, let me see. I think that's everything. Oh, again, I forgot to tell you, if you're new, you can find me on Instagram as tiffs underscore inspired life i'll put it up here and if you want to follow me on ravelry i'm there as tiffany loves yarn and with that i think that's everything thank you so much for watching i hope that you found this episode entertaining and go back and watch the first one if you feel so inclined and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more content from me and until the next time i will talk to you soon bye everybody <laughs>